Let's pray again. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love. So much love that you sent your only son, Jesus, who was sinless to take upon all the sins of the world. We are so unworthy, Lord, but you love us anyway. We ask you to bless this fruit of the vine, so symbolic of Jesus' blood, poured out for many. We thank you so much for your love your grace, your mercy, your guidance. All this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. on our list of, of prayer requests is that we pray for Jill Park. As you probably know by now, Gordon went home to be with the Lord on Thursday. And uh, I've been checking in on Jill and she tells me I will be okay. We know this is a terrible loss for her. And uh, many of you have been through the same thing. And you know. And uh, so please pray. Give me some prayer requests and updates for people for us to pray for. Linda, yes. today so our Facebook friends can hear this too. Linda's brother Dallas um, had a heart catheterization and they discovered a, an old heart attack. Um, 
he's been doing well since then, but now they are alert to it and they can watch it and give him some medication for it. And I believe he has some others to tell us about too. Do you, any word on Rick? so grateful because Rick uh, Rick Fuller after the surgery at one of the surgical points had a, a lump that was still there and they were concerned about it so the doctor wanted a, a test on it and it's nothing to worry about just uh, post-surgical stuff yes yes So Kenny, Linda's brother Kenny, has been struggling with AFib. They did an ablation, but it doesn't seem to have taken completely. So they're watching that and going to look at it in the future. So. So Dave Monroe is having kidney dialysis. Pray for him that this will be, he'll do well. Roger, yes. Uh, to the family of my uncle, Dave Burke, passed away. Yes. I think at 95. He's the last of the three siblings. My aunt passed away at 96, and my dad was Pretty amazing. Dick was well known and liked in our community. and. And his name lives on in Burdick Plumbing, because that was, I believe he started that business, didn't he? Yes. So pray for Dick Burdick's family. Others. Hello, Valerie. <laughs> Okay, this is regarding her uh, immigration status. Yeah, her uh, asylum papers and all of that. That's right. Yeah. So keep praying for her. Yes. Um, spell her name again for me so I can get it, pronounce it right. O-Z-L-E-M. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And Orhan, good to see you, man. <laughs> And, <laughs> and I think you're going to have to hold him up. You're going to have to hold They have somebody to show off today. Um, we're going to just suspend the sermon and we're going to play with the baby today. How about that? You know what? Unfortunately, if I actually put that to a Democratic vote, it would be overwhelming. Forget it. You don't get out of it that easily. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two babies here today. We've got Roni and we've got Dave. Uh, on the kind of the opposite end of the of the age spectrum. You know, Dave, you come back the first Sunday and here I am 
telling jokes about you. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. No, you don't. No. <laughs> what is it about you that just invites that? <laughs> You know what, when, when Dave was in the hospital and in the nursing home, um, I used to warn people, when you go to visit him, be careful, because he's going to tell some corny jokes. Do not bring them back here. <laughs> but some of you did anyways. Nobody listens to me. You know what, I have feelings in here. Dave, we love you, and we are so glad to see you. That is pretty obvious. <laughs> Amy, it's nice to see you too. <laughs> oh, others. Yes. First off, I have an update on Lou Yes. He's a daughter. She's up to five pounds. Okay. She's Sounds like she's making good progress. Yes. And my little mama here, she's going to be having some surgery after 18. Really? Um, she's going to have a demon of a hernia. Okay. She assures me it's no big deal. Of course. <laughs> God's got this, doesn't she? It doesn't he. Yes. Um, also, Brenda and I will not be here next Sunday or the Sunday after. We'll be in Guyana, South America. Um, and while we're gone, I believe that Peggy and Neil, is this your last Sunday before spring? No, You'll be here one more Sunday. So this next Sunday will be the last Sunday for a while for Neil and Peggy and for Darwin and Ernesta. Uh, They're heading to hurricane territory. They have escaped damage from the hurricane. Um, and we obviously want to play for, pray for the folks in Florida. There, were, there was some pretty serious loss of life and some devastating property loss, um, including Karen's and my sister and her husband um, had a, a mobile home down there that they were renting and going to use in the winter, and it was totally destroyed. And they had been unable to get full coverage insurance for it, only liability, so it's a total loss. Um, but no, nobody was injured, so that's we're grateful for that, and I know they are too. But Peggy, yes. I don't know if this is prayer request or grace in part, but Wednesday, Vaughn left Mayo. Oh yes. And went to rehab. It's about I think Marilyn said about twelve miles away. Um, they're hoping he'll be there just two weeks. I guess they had a big send off balloons and everything because he's been there since July fifth in the same yes. ICU wards. <laughs> they all got to know him. Marilyn helped it herself. Praise God for that. Keep praying for Lon Schindler, a dear brother down in the Bradenton, Florida area, um, who has become endeared to the folks at the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> Not because he wanted to, but he is a great, great man of God and has been through pretty serious stuff with a transplant, uh, a failed liver that they transplanted, and then another transplant, and then the circuitous road that comes to re through re recovery. And he's making good progress now, so keep praying. What do you say? Let's pray. Father, we bring these people to you. We are so grateful 
that we have this time that we can address you and share our concerns, our love for each other, and for our friends and family. And so we bring to you, Jill, Lord, I've been asking you to wrap your arms around her and give her comfort in the moments when she is hurting the most. And I know you will do that, Lord. Please continue to do that. We are so grateful to know that Gordon is in your care now. Please be with Dallas, Lord. We're grateful that you protected him over these years. We're, we praise God that Rick is okay. We ask you to be with Kenny, Linda's brother, in, in this AFib, and we pray it can be resolved. And Lord, we pray for Dave Monroe uh, and the dialysis treatments he's getting, that he'll be okay. Bless the family of Dick Burdick and give them comfort and peace right now. And Lord, thank you for the good news that Oslem had her interview. Lord, we ask that you would intervene and that you would make this go smoothly for her to get asylum and be able to live here permanently. Oh God, please, we beg you for that. We pray for little Maggie, and we give you praise that she's doing well. And Lord, we pray for Marjorie. We thank you for, for watching over her and caring for her and walking closely with her. Bless her in this upcoming surgery, Lord. And Father, we give you praise for what you've done in Lon's life, for the fact that even though this has not been an easy process, it's been clear that you've been with him throughout this. And so please bring him through the rehabilitation and into home and continued progress of recovery. We place these people into your hands, Lord. You are faithful and trustworthy. And we, and we have all kinds of confidence in you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We shared some praise reports during that time. Does anybody have any other ones that you'd like to share with us? Um, I have one. Um, Peggy is only going to be here one more Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Let's see. Mike had one, and then Janice got one. Mike, yes. You know it goes from us to you too, Mike. I'll tell you what, if that was burnt, burn it every time. It was absolutely delicious. <laughs> Fantastic. We love you guys a whole lot. Janet, yes. Wow, Janet's mom turns 95 tomorrow, and Rhonda completed her IOP, and she's, it looks like she's taking hold of recovery. Oh, keep praying for Rhonda. Yes, beautiful. That reminds me, I think we have some birthdays. Mike, yes. Yeah. Safety is number one. That's fantastic. Ricky did so well. He did amazingly well. Um, and I'll tell you what, watching Maddox and Ricky on the river a couple of weeks ago was a lot of fun. Those guys went at least 16 miles when the rest of us went eight miles. <laughs> they zigzagged back and forth across the river. 
they were having a great time, and they were tough and persistent, and it was a thrill to see them. <laughs> Maddox, you're a good canoeer. You're a good guy. David, yes. For me, it was torture, Dave. And I never will neglect an opportunity to highlight what an amazing blessing Amy Corp is. You inspire us, Amy. You are, you are being Jesus in flesh among us, and we appreciate you. Linda, yes. I don't have a joke for you this morning. Yeah, that's, a, that's okay. The, 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 that's, Linda, yes. Let's hear it for Dan. <laughs> and you're going to, Dan gets to have a series, a short series in the next two weeks. And he's promised me he's going to spike his mohawk. So those of you watching on Facebook Live, look for that. Now you have to, Dan. You have to do it. <laughs> He's going to do what I can't do. I kind of have a, I have a reverse mohawk. That's why I'm doing it now. Because it'll <laughs> there you go. That's it. You have to do it now. Let's have a prayer, and uh, we'll just. Oh, Brenda, yes. Women's study is this Thursday, not the second Thursday. Yes. 7, or 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. this Thursday for Women's Bible Study. So, Father, you are so good to us. We give you praise and honor and glory. Thank you for the good things you're doing in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. And I realize that we may have a birthday or two. Yes. I was just going to say that we are happy to be back. This is, he's three months old today. Oh. And All of 
us are going to be aware of the fact that we will respect your distances and whatever else, okay? Cause, yeah, don't kiss him. Because you know our, our instinct is going to be to eat him up. Yeah. <laughs> but, seriously, we'll, we'll follow the lead, okay? Sounds good. And, I, and there's a guy here that protects that little boy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Orhan's an amazing dad. He is a great dad. And, uh, Rooney. Rooney. Beautiful, and he is magnificent. Thank you. Now, I forgot to check the calendar. Do we have any birthdays coming up? It seems like we did this week. No, next week. It'll be next week. Okay. All right. We're going to dismiss the children, teens, um, to class, and we're going to open the word together. Hey guys, David Dusek with Rough Cut Men Ministries, and I am standing in the American Cemetery in Normandy, France, a couple of hundred meters above Omaha Beach. I can promise you one thing about the men behind me. Not one of them left a man behind. They grabbed a, a guy by the shoulder or a guy by the leg and dragged them into safety. A lot of them didn't make it, but their core mantra is, I am not going to leave my brother behind. One of the things that I've learned working with the Army is it's not as much about the division parade ground or the brigade parade ground or even headquarters. When men are in battle, what really matters are the brothers that are in the Humvee with the 50 cal up on the hood, outside the wire, downrange, and on enemy ground. Our mission and our vision at Rough Cut Men is to connect men together in battle-ready fire teams. So there is no way that a man will ever travel alone. The Rough Cut Men movie experience uses a strategic combination of Hollywood action movies like Saving Private Ryan, Top Gun, Facing the Giants, Rudy, coupled with really authentic topical discussions, biblical truth, and strategic fire team breakout sessions where we put two or three guys together and we get real with each other. Because here's the deal, we're really good at faking it. And I'm absolutely tired of watching men fake their way through life. Because it's not a matter of if things are going to go wrong, it's a matter of when. And it's who we have on our six, on our back, making sure that we survive. That's the most important thing we can have. It's not about Bible studies, it's not about Sunday morning. It is about two or three men around us who can bring us off the battlefield when we're wounded in life. We are that much more valuable for the division, for the church, for service, when we have brothers in arms around us fighting that battle. To learn more about Rough Cut Men, you can find us at roughcutmen.org. We are with you in the battle. I wanted you to see that, and I wanted not just our men to see that, but their wives to see this. Because your husband needs to be a part of this. Our friends, my friend, Barry Holub, who attends New Leaf United Methodist Church, uh, has done all the legwork to, to bring one of these events to Kanye. And it's going to be November 4th and 5th. It's a Friday night and a Saturday morning. It'll start with a barbecue dinner Friday night and a breakfast Saturday morning and sessions along with those. Uh, David Dusek will be there. But as you can see, it also includes some inspiring and entertainment and entertaining film uh, presentations that fit right in with it, as well as some Bible study and some groups. And uh, it will really help our guys. So if you're going to be around, please be a part of this. Um, I will give you more information about getting tickets. 
um, we need to get them right away because they need to know how many to plan for so they can start planning the food and know exactly you know how they're going to organize things so I will be sending some emails out and probably texts and I'll, I'll even send you a link to their website there are some other promo videos you can watch and get more of a feel of what it's about but I hope that you will grab onto this opportunity it'll help us be strong for each other and now I want to read to you a section from Mark chapter 1 starting with verse 46 then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem for Passover. As you know, this would be his last Passover on earth. He knew what was going to happen when he went into the city. He'd been warned by his disciples, no, <laughs> don't go, Lord. They want to kill you. Jericho was 25 miles from Jerusalem. A lot of things happened in Jesus' ministry on that road to Jericho. The, uh, the story about the Samaritan who helped and saved the life of a man who'd been beaten and left for dead along the road was one. And as Jesus walked along this road from Jericho to Jerusalem, uh, he accumulated a crowd of listeners. It was a typical way for a rabbi to teach. You wouldn't find Jesus standing in front of a classroom giving a lecture. He walked, and people walked with him. And as he came through villages on the way, people would join the crowd and listening to him, asking questions, having a dialogue. We know from some other statements that his teaching was, um, it, it was amazing. It was like one that they'd never heard before because the writer of the scriptures has become the teacher of the scriptures. And I love that sound and please keep him in here. He is the amen corner. He's, he's just fine. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Oh, he's, he's gonna be happy real soon. Blindness 